I know you have a lot of unresolved feelings, but I'm still your father. You're not my father. You weren't there. That wasn't my choice. I was there when you were little. Most kids play catch with their father. They don't go with them to a thong shoot. There's a lot of starving children in Africa who would die to go to a thong shoot. What? Look, let me make it up to you. Let's go play ball catching now. Ball catching? So, how's the family reunion going? Great. I'd like to check him out for a few hours if that's okay. Sure. As long as he's back by sundown. He seems like a nice guy. You seem like an idiot. Thanks, everybody. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Congratulations on uh, Zoolander 2. One of, I think one of the most uh, expected movies of the year. People are so excited for this movie. Yeah, it's a really funny movie. <laughs> Thank That's you very good. much. Yeah, oh yeah. That's good it worked out then, that it's really funny. <laughs> How did you get involved with this movie? Um, well, I had an audition about a year ago. Wait, yeah, a year and a half ago. And um, that was at Paramount. I didn't really know what it was. So um, I got the script, I read it. And then that weekend, I went to the callback for the movie. Um, and then we didn't hear anything for about four months. And then four months later, I um, go to New York to meet Ben and, you know, uh, talk to him and see if I'm okay. Was that an audition as well? Or was that meeting him to sort of get, sort of feel each other out and get to know each other a little that bit? That was like, uh, that was the, another audition. Yeah, but it was the final one, you know. Were you auditioning with Ben in, in that one, doing a scene with him? Uh, yes, yeah. He was in the room, yeah. Go ahead. And Ben sent the auditions to like a few of us and he was the only one who could really challenge him. Really? Yeah. How were you challenging him? Uh, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> you know, it was something inherent in the performance that like oh. you could just tell that Ben couldn't, you know, control you totally, which was really funny. Which probably gave him uh, as a performer more to latch onto and more, more to play with as well, that someone was actually doing their own thing in front of him. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was a great movie to shoot. Yeah, and you shot you shot in Rome for like a number four months. Of, four months. Yeah, that was I've fun. never even been to Rome, and I'm 31 years old. You spent yeah. four months in Rome. <laughs> um, I it was um an interesting experience because when I went to Rome, went to Rome, I never been out of the country before, so that was a really special experience. And you were there for four months. What was it? What was it like? Um, the service is different, and. <laughs> Like, really different, and you can never get a bad meal there. All the meals were fantastic, um, especially that Quattro Formaggio pizza. God, I eat it. But, um, Did you ride a was, Vespa? Huh? Did you ever ride a Vespa? Uh, no. Huh. Okay. But, um, <laughs> okay, that's enough. I did not ride a Vespa, Nick. <laughs> yeah. See? It's, he's, it's, it's, he's challenging <laughs> in a good way. So what did you do in, in Rome outside of, outside of Shoot the Movie? You ate amazing food. It was always incredible. What else did you, did um, you see? I went sightseeing. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the Colosseum twice. That was colossal. Like, it's twice the size of Disneyland. Wait, no, that's an exaggeration. It's about <laughs> half of Disneyland. <laughs> so it's not twice. It's half of Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> that's its tagline. It's half of Disneyland. It's half is Disneyland. Coliseums. Half the Coliseum. of Disneyland. I could just see a commercial. The Coliseum. Half of Disneyland. And kind of broken and messed, like not really fully prepared or yeah. prepared for you. Well, what was cool about it is um, underneath the Coliseum, they, they um, sent the animals underneath so the gladiators could fight them. They dug that up so you could see everything that was going on under the Coliseum. So that was pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. So you got a bit of a history lesson while you were there pretending to be the son of a male model. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's um, cool. Nick, how did you get involved with the film? Because you, you were involved with the, the, the first one, right? But, you know, I don't know if people know who Nick Stoller is. He's the writer and uh, director of Forgetting Sarah Marshall, or the director of Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Get Him to the Greek, uh, Neighbors, Neighbors 2, a uh, number of really great sort of classic comedy films at this point. So how did Ben approach you? How did you get involved? Oh, well, thank, uh, thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I started writing it, uh, working on the script about a few weeks before I got married, and I've just celebrated, or this past September, celebrated my 10-year wedding anniversary. So you started so, working on the script 10 years ago? That wasn't, I mean, thank you for saying awe. Oh, that actually wasn't, a, uh, that was like, it was It was 10 years. I wrote the script for over 10 years. He's over the marriage. You don't have to awe now. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. 10 years. I mean, I love my, you know. But, uh, 
but yeah, it was it was, and what was interesting about it is that it was me, um, uh, Ben. Obviously, it's Ben's movie. Uh, John Hamburg and um, Justin Thoreau, who wrote the who wrote the original, right? John Hamburg, uh, a, a man named Drake Sather, and Ben wrote the original. I think. That I think happened. and Thoreau wasn't a part of the. I I don't. I'm not sure. I don't. Think okay. So. Um, I'm not sure. I should IMDb it. But uh, but yeah. But so the but the four of us wrote it. Usually with a long development process, there's like a hundred writers. But it was just the four of us writing it on and off over ten years. So it never got diluted by other voices. And it just and with each draft, the best jokes would kind of be left behind. Uh, as you know, the rest as it got revised. So it was a really it was a really cool process. How did you guys write together? I mean, you're all working on different projects. So do you ever come together to write, or are you sort of sending emails and rewriting drafts on your own, or getting like bits of scenes through email and sort of adjusting it and talking about it uh, that way? Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, we started it before the cloud existed. <laughs> like that's how long ago it was. Uh, or before email, you were before it was no email. Email existed, but the iPhone didn't. I don't. No, the iPhone, the first one. Uh, but we, uh, we would meet once in a while. I mean, like, there were periods where I would do a draft. There were periods where, like, or Ben and I would do a draft, or, like, John and Ben, or just John, or just, just, just Justin, or Justin and Ben. So it was kind of like we would tend to write our draft separately, but then we would get together and pitch on it together. Mm -hmm. And how has it changed over the course of 10 years? What did you see uh, really shift and adjust? I imagine, I mean, Zoolander, as well as sort of, sort of something like Ben's other movies, like Tropic Thunder, are really connected to the moment in many ways and the celebrities of the moment and, a lot of, and mocking a lot of those trends. So did you find when you got the green light to start shooting it, you guys had to go back and sort of rethink how you were going to shoot it to make it sort of up to date and topical for that moment? No, I mean, it kind of just naturally evolved to that. It never really, I mean, when it was greenlit there was a little bit more writing to happen i guess than the year leading up to it shooting but it wasn't we weren't like let's make it all con super contemporary at that at that moment um and yeah it wasn't you know the main thing that evolved was just like getting the story into shape you know and making you know and there are a few big leaps as a you know as we wrote it you know um you know when i the first drafts i i'm pretty i think i wrote some of the first drafts and it was basically a collection of funny scenes with no plot uh, which doesn't really work for a movie, and so and some of this, you know, some of the stuff was in there is still in the movie. Um, but I remember there was a big leap that happened, like kind of maybe four or five years into the process, uh, but you know, where it suddenly became kind of a Da Vinci Code. Like if the first movie is stupid Manchurian Candidate, this is stupid Da Vinci Code, and that was like a big kind of leap plot-wise. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so there are a few kind of leaps like that that happened. I'm always curious with a movie like this how you figure out the cameo system because so much of that has to do with scheduling, I would imagine. When you get that final script to go shoot, are you locked in those cameos or do you sort of have these kind of broad ideas for a character and it could be Justin Bieber or it could be someone else who, who can kind of make it there to, to shoot? Yeah. I mean, we wrote in a lot of cameos and... Uh, and then they got a lot of them. I mean, a lot of. I mean, it was it was pretty awesome. I think people really liked the first movie. I think the unlike when the first movie came out, I think the fashion industry has really embraced the first movie, and so they got a lot of the. They got basically, you know, they got a lot of the people that they wanted to get. Um, and so, yeah, it was it was pretty exciting in terms. I love that the fashion industry embraced the movie. It's like leave it to a New York industry to enjoy being made fun of, <laughs> and like as, as a celebration of itself. Um, so, Cyrus, you're working with Ben Stiller. Did you ever get intimidated working with Ben Stiller? Um, I'm trying to think. Well, no, because he also directed the movie, so he was giving me direction for, um, uh, yeah, how to be better in the scene. And you play his son. As we saw in the clip. Yeah, um, I do. The thing about it is because um, I originally wasn't almost cast because I was too skinny for the role. So I um, had to gain 15 pounds for the role. Did Just, you really? Yeah. Like, and Rome really helped me with that. <laughs> So my mom and I called it the Zoolander diet. So unlike Ben, where he had to lose weight, well, he wasn't heavy. He was really in fit. Yeah. But um, he had to be, you know, really fit and buff. Well, not really. But <laughs> just good looking. He had to be good looking. Really, really, unlike really me, good looking. Where we called it the Zoolander diet, so yeah. I had to gain weight. And I'm like, oh, Mom, this is a whole pizza. And then she's like, it doesn't matter. We can't really... <laughs> If you gain weight, it's not really our fault. So we could take advantage of that. 
And how do you feel about that now? Um, I don't regret it because all the food was, you know, phenomenal. But um, it's Rome, so all the food was, you know, great. When you were told that you had to gain 15 pounds to be in Zoolander 2, what was your first thought? Um, I mean, I can see Vincent D'Onofrio in Full Metal Jacket being okay, but, like, what were your thoughts for Zoolander 2? I wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't at all worried about anything. I thought it was so fun to have to eat a lot. Like, like it would be amazing. Just to, like, it's like, could you eat this whole pizza? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that is the most honest answer I think I've ever heard about a, a weight change for an actor. All <laughs> actors usually like to say, oh, it was really hard. You know, I had to go on a specific diet. Or no, I had to it's do this. fun. Did you always have dessert? Um, like, what was your relationship to dessert? I'm more of a savory guy, oh, okay. so I had a lot of meals. <laughs> yeah. So you would get like you would get pasta and pizza, or no, no, no. Um, just the, you just go whole pizza. I, I go whole pizza. Uh, outside of working with Ben, who was your favorite to work with on the movie? Who were you most excited? Other to, than Ben. Uh, other than Ben, yeah. Um, Will and, the, and the chef. Uh, what? And the chef. Okay. The catering team. Um, <laughs> Oh, I actually, um, since the food was so good on a catering set, I actually, I actually dressed up as a chef and started serving food with them. Isn't that true? On set, yeah. Because they, they got me a shirt. My mom's like, hmm, maybe, I, maybe Cyrus would want to do this. And I'm like, yeah, and we just, I just got in the food truck and then just started serving sandwiches. But mostly eating the sandwiches to maintain the, the Zoolander 2 diet. That was my lunch, so... Oh, okay. The truck was my lunch, but um, uh, Will Ferrell, I love to work with, because the only time I broke character in the whole movie was with Will Ferrell. Was really? Scene. Just me and him. And, like, a lot of the, you know what scene I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it was just me and him. And he, like, in, it was just, like, one or two sentences. He went on this big improvised monologue. Just like throwing stuff out there, that was hilarious. And um, if you did a try not to laugh challenge, you'd lose in like two seconds. <laughs> Is he the hard? I have this. I have this uh, feeling or this this idea about Will Ferrell. Well, where there are so many people that are funny in movies, but Will Ferrell might be the hardest for other actors to keep it together with. He seems like he's trying to get people to break when he's shooting. Well, he's so funny that it seems like it, but no, he's like. But if um, you laugh and it's so hard not to, he's still going to try. He's still going to deliver the stuff because he wants to make a good movie, not just to make the characters not laugh. Mm -hmm. So we'll still say funny lines, maybe funnier than before. <laughs> Nicholas, I have to ask you, you've worked with uh, a lot of really funny people. Who, who, who makes you break the most, I mean, when you're directing? Has there ever been anyone that you've had to go back and get takes because you laugh too hard behind camera? Oh, that, that I... Uh, I mean, I've gotten... Pretty good at keeping it together. Uh, What's your secret? My, um, just keeping the video village really far from the set. <laughs> so that's basically it. <laughs> I do remember on Forgetting Sarah Marshall, my brother was visiting and we were shooting the kind of drunk dinner scene that's at the end. And my brother just forgot he was on a set and laughed really loudly. And Jonah Hill like turned around and was like, what was that? <laughs> Which was like a really... But yeah, I mean, I've been really lucky with the people that I've worked with. Uh, I mean, on Neighbors, like, Seth and Rose really make me laugh. Ike Barinholtz makes me laugh, like, yeah. really hard. Uh, um, and actually, on the recent one, Zach was just insanely funny. Uh, Jonah's super funny. There's, I've worked with so many funny people that, that it's, uh, it's hard to point out. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising? I know we're talking about Zoolander 2, but I think there's a lot of people excited for, for uh, Neighbors 2. Uh, I saw the trailer for that movie. It's hilarious. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Did you see the first one? Are nope. you allowed to? My mom, no. No? <laughs> but he loves the trailer. I saw the one clip <laughs> yeah. on YouTube. Okay. Um, about uh, I can show it to you on my... Efron oh, yeah? something. Oh right, okay. Gra on the first one, grabbing something that could re that could refer to a lot of things. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. I have it on my phone. I'll show it to you. Oh, okay. Later, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> the movie you have Neighbors Two sorority no, I, on I your phone I right now. No, I don't have Neighbors Two. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm really excited about Neighbors Two. It's. Um, it's been really. You know, it's it's just exciting to get to make a movie where where people really want a sequel, and then to get to tell a story that is. Uh, where you know you get to follow these characters at the next emotional stage in their life. Uh, um, so yeah, we're trying to make if the first one is kind of dumb, gross, R-rated Toy Story, 
Neighbors 2 is dumb, gross, R-rated. Toy Story 2 is the idea. <laughs> that's our goal. We'll see if we hit it, but that's the goal. What is it like... I mean, you have Zoolander 2, you have Neighbors 2. Get Him to the Greek was kind of a... Not a, not a sequel, but like a spin partner off. film, like a spinoff. Um, I feel like maybe 20, 30 years ago, even though there were sequels, there was, even in the comedy world, like negativity looked at when it came to making sequels. Like, oh, you're cashing in. And now, I think culturally and in the movie industry, we've kind of accepted... Everyone's like, comfortable with it. Well, we're comfortable <laughs> with the cash-in because we know it's about making jokes and making people laugh. Yeah. Did you ever have a feeling where you had to sort of come to terms with, with doing sequels? And did you have to realize, like, no, it's actually just really fun to continue telling these stories? Yeah, I mean, I always... Because, well, Get Him to the Greek, we started... It we didn't start as a spin-off, and there wasn't really, like... The, the idea with it was... I just, at the table read for Sarah Marshall, uh, Russell and Jonah were so funny together. I was like, that's a movie. And then the movie that I figured out with them was a rock star and a guy helping him. And it just seemed, it would be weird if he played a different rock star. So then we just turned it, kind of working backwards, turned it into a spinoff. But it wasn't ever like a, you know, we're gonna, you know, it, it didn't start as that. Um, but I always, I always thought that like, if I was lucky enough to have a movie that financially merited having a sequel, and if we could figure out the story, I would happily do a sequel. Because I think people love those characters, and if you can figure out a great story with those characters, it's like, there's not, you're not selling out, you're just telling the next chapter, it's like a giant episode of television, and you're, sh and you're, sh you're shooting the second giant episode of television, if that makes sense. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have some time for uh, audience uh, Q&A. Does anyone have any questions out here? Uh, in, we can start with a question audience? from an online viewer. So, uh, Larry says, so, Zoolander 3, dot, 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 <laughs> I don't get it. Is that a question? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's very suspenseful. Uh, oh my God. I don't know. What do you think? If they should do a Zoolander 3? Yeah. Um, you know, since um, Ben Stiller... <laughs> I, I'm just throwing an idea. Like, this is just from a 13-year-old. So, I mean, uh, but maybe since he has a kid... Yeah. They should do, like, Meet the Zoolanders or something, just about the family. Oh, like a mashup? Yeah, like, just, to, you know, like, um, Meet the Fockers. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that, except satirized. Oh, yeah. Like a movie version of a Zoolander sitcom. Outside of comic book movies, has there ever, has there ever been movie mashup before? That could actually be a really interesting idea. I don't think I've ever heard of a oh comedy God. mashup. Of, a, of any kind of movies off the top of my head. Just Batman versus Superman is the only thing that I can think of. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess the universe... Because usually comedy universes are self-contained. Yeah. <laughs> or... To or, use the word universe, too, is really funny when it comes to... They can make a spin-off of uh, Vanel uh, Penelope Cruz's character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And call it... Um, I, I forgot her name in the movie. I laugh every time... Uh, every time I hear Owen Wilson in the trailer say, She's hot. I trust her. Yeah. Who, 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 who wrote, who, whose line was that? You know, I don't, I don't remember. I, I have, like, it was over, it was literally over so many years, I don't even remember, like, what I wrote and what Ben wrote and what, I mean, we became in what Justin wrote or, you know, John, so, so I'm not, I'm not sure. Were you on set? But I'll take credit for it. I wrote that Yeah, line. take it. You're the writer. You're here. I wrote it. I wrote it, yeah. There's no other writer as long as they're not on this stage right now. Exactly. Um, were you on set at all? I couldn't be on set because of Neighbors too. Yeah. I really wanted to be, though, in Rome eating pizza because that, that would be incredible. But yeah. how do you, uh, I'm curious, how do you uh, run your set when you're, when you're shooting a movie like Neighbors? I too? scream a lot. You scream a lot? Screaming. Like, have you ever seen, any, like, Werner Herzog? Yeah. That's the kind of vibe I bring to the set. Calling people <laughs> stupid? Just S scream, very stern. Uh, <laughs> no, I have a very, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm very, I'm, Hyper planned, like it's a very plan. Everything's planned, and I'm. But it, but I like to create an environment where it seems loose, and I look relaxed, even though inside I'm freaking out. Do you bring uh, other comedy writers on set though, and throw out lines? I know a lot of these movies, like maybe maybe not Neighbors, but a lot of uh, comedy movies, maybe even Zoolander, have other writers on set who are just willing to throw out several lines for the actors to kind of work with and see which one will be the funniest in the edit room. Uh, yeah, I always have um, writers on set, um, and well, you know, they'll write jokes that I'll maybe yell out. I'll think of stuff and you know yell stuff out, and then the actors improv as well. And so we kind of get everything, you know, uh, into the edit, and then and then the best joke tends to win. Uh, but usually by that point, by the time I'm shooting, the script is pretty much locked down in terms of the story and what the you know what the point of each scene is. So it's not like we're doing you know. Uh, 
curb your enthusiasm where it's just like an outline. Like it's a, it's a, we have table reads and stuff where we really figure it out. And then on the day that it allows you the freedom to kind of throw it out and try a bunch of different things. How often do you find when you get into the edit room that uh, the sort of superfluous or the, uh, the stuff that you were doing on set, adding jokes or bringing writers on, doesn't really make it in and it, you end up really sticking to what you wrote because you had spent so much time writing it that that was kind of the best material? Yeah, I mean, it usually ends up about 60 to 70% kind of scripted or close to scripted and about 30 to 40 improv, I would say, um, or r jokes, written right. jokes. Um, yeah, that's always usually around the ratio. Uh, next question. Hi, guys. Thanks for being here. Um, a huge fan of Neighbors. Um, Thank you. Applaud to you for that. Um, and Cyrus, this is for you. Um, how do you relate the most to your character? Um, like, like my character? Yeah, how that you play is, and okay. then versus you. So... Derek Jr., um, he, he does love his dad. He does, in the inside. But in the outside, he does detest him because of the way this, um, he just thinks in a different way than him, and it's kind of different for Derek Jr. to, um, you know, do that stuff. And he's going through a lot. Like, the stuff with Will Ferrell is crazy. <laughs> like, when you watch the movie, you're like, whoa, I can imagine what that character's going through. And... <laughs> Oh, speaking about Will Ferrell, um, when um, it's so hard, he's so professional, so good at that, uh, what he does. If you try to be him, because his ad libs are crazy, like half the stuff he does in the movie is improv. And um, like if he says something like an improvised line, and then he just says it on the top of his mind, everyone laughs, you know? And then I try to do it in a scene, and then Ben Stiller's like, don't do that, just stop. <laughs> And I'm like, what was your improv, can I ask? Oh, I did something like, uh, I don't know. I, I came up with a lot of stuff. Like, because um, the inside of this character, he does love his dad. And then there was this line that I said in the end of a Hansel scene. And then I said something dumb, like, I'm going to die surrounded by idiots. And then he's like, and then Midstiller's like, don't say that. <laughs> Take it, leave it, leave it to the pros. Kid. I know, and then he just leave it to Wolf, uh, Owen Wilson. And when he says something, Ben Stiller's like, "Okay, let's redo that take again." And then he looks at the camera guy like, <sighs> then he just continues on. Does, o does Owen uh, improvise a lot? Owen? Yeah. I mean, some of his stuff is hilarious. Yeah. Um. Yeah, <laughs> but others not so. No. <laughs> No, but I, I'm just saying that Will Ferrell, he's at the top of his game in this movie. And yeah, he's amazing. Absolutely. I'm really excited to see Will Ferrell bring Mugatu back, not just because I loved Mugatu the first time, but it's really nice to see Will Ferrell do something totally crazy. Yeah. I feel like in, in many ways he's been sort of shoehorned into being almost like a sort of odd straight man in a lot of his comedies, and I love so many of them, but Will Ferrell as a crazy man is, is, is the best kind of Will Ferrell you can get. Yeah. And I think we have time for one uh, last question right here. How's it going? Uh, given the theme, the themes of the Zoolander movies, I was wondering if you guys had any plans for Fashion Week. The what? Are you doing, Are you going to Fashion Week? <laughs> oh, well. They don't let comedy writers into Fashion Week, <laughs> so no. Have you ever been to a Fashion Week uh, or like a fashion no. runway shoot? You you literally sit there like this, just like I have. I don't belong here. Yeah, this no, is weird. I I've never been to one. I'm pretty sure I'll never go to one, except there, I, there might be a joke one later today that I'll be at, but yeah. Cyrus, will you be attending any uh, fashion runway shows for Fashion Week? Um, n no, but um, we did this... Okay, no. But um, we did this thing where, like, we're doing magazine covers, and then, like, the uh, photographer, um, you know, he's just shooting me, and they're just magazine covers of me, like, you know, um, going over the top with... Making model faces, yeah. like joke like, model faces. I am so pretty, like just. What's, 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 can I see your model face? Oh, it's it's yeah. kind of the thing about the model face is I actually practiced with Ben Stiller mm -hmm. to try to perfect my own interpretation of blue steel. Of blue steel. Ooh. And like it's, and then we we tried this for like a, an entire day, and he's just looking at me like, okay, now try like under the eyes, you know, and do something with your eyebrows like. You know, and just think you're the sexiest guy in the world. How did that work out? Hmm? I don't know. I, I can't really <laughs> judge myself in the movie of how 
sexy my look is. Can we see? Can we? Can can our audience oh, see your blue steel? Which camera should I do it to? Do it to the audience. Maybe the do center it. camera oh, right oh, here. Okay. I would do it to the cheapest camera because you might break it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cyrus's blue steel. Go ahead. Whoa! Wow. wow. That was pretty solid. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely, guys. It's uh, really harder than it looks. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it took an entire day just to do, you know, a outer lip duck face and then <laughs> under the eyes. Uh, Zoolander two is this Friday, right, guys? Yeah. Congratulations oh, yeah. Uh, on the movie. Thank you so much for oh, being here. You. It's been a pleasure talking. Thanks for having us. Thank you.